is to help them to connect more closer to Srila Prabhupada. Sometimes devotees misunderstand the process of initiation and they become overly affectionate towards the person who is giving them the initiation. The initiation process is to connect the devotee into ISKCON as a member of ISKCON and to have a respectful attitude towards all the spiritual teachers in ISKCON. There are many, many different, more than 100 spiritual masters within Islam. Some are sannyasis, some are not sannyasis, some are in family life. Not all are disciples of Srila Prabhupada, some are grand disciples and even grand grand disciples of Prabhupada. And in the future, as the society goes on, in the future, in the years to come, will be more and more generations of disciples. But Srila Prabhupada is always a preeminent founder Acharya and devotees accept initiation to also connect them closely to Srila Prabhupada's teachings. And so all the devotees who are being initiated into Krishna consciousness today want to understand the importance of Srila Prabhupada and they want, we want to encourage them to dedicate themselves fully to Prabhupada's mission and Prabhupada's society. It's important for the devotees to uh, understand that how the Krishna consciousness movement is managed, how it's set up. But the, 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 in, in Islam, the, the devotees have to work together cooperatively with the managerial authority as well as the spiritual authority. And so just like myself as a sannyasi, I'm engaged in the spiritual propaganda of the Krishna consciousness movement. But the, there are many devotees who are concerned with the management of the Krishna consciousness movement, particularly the centers, just like our center here. It's a big center and there's a lot of expenses involved in maintaining this big temple. So it's very important that there's a cooperation between the spiritual, the, the spiritual arm of ISKCON and the uh, managerial arm of ISKCON. And so when people accept someone today, they may accept me as a spiritual teacher, but still they have a duty to respect the managerial authorities here in our ISKCON center. Uh, mm -hmm. the devotees have to be willing to help and uh, maintain these centers which have been in our response center. Okay.
<laughs> so we encourage all the devotees work together, cooperate together, and maintain this Krishna consciousness. So we give initiation at the time of initiation, it's customary that we should explain the ten offenses and chant in the holy name. Right. The first offense is to blaspheme devotees who have dedicated their life propagating the holy name of the Lord. It's so very important for the devotees to work together and not to create conflicts between each other. You know, people can get in the bodily concept of life. Someone can think, oh, these Indian people. Someone else can think, oh, these Chinese people. Oh, these Russian people. Oh, these foreign people. And in this way, we become very much bodily conscious. So we want to avoid that bodily concept of life. We want to remember we are all pure spirit souls, although we're in different material bodies. And so, in order to avoid offending devotees, it's very important to appreciate devotees. Offer all respects to others and don't be anxious to be respected yourself. Second offense is to consider names of demigods like Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma to be equal to or independent of the name of Lord Vishnu. Three to, number three, to disobey the orders of the spiritual teacher. So Srila Prabhupada gives us instructions, we should do our best to follow these instructions. Most important instruction is to chant Hare Krishna mantra regularly, every day, at least 16 rounds. The fourth offense is to blaspheme Vedic literature or any literature in pursuance of the Vedic version. This means you should read Prabhupada's books regularly. If you're not reading regularly, then you are offending the books. Five, to consider the glories of chanting Hare Krishna to be imagination. So the power of chanting Hare Krishna is very great, it can destroy unlimited amounts of sins. And if we don't believe that, then that is an offense. Sixth offense is to give some interpretation of the holy name of the Lord. Sometimes 
Seventh offense is to commit sinful activities on the strength of chanting the holy name. This is a very serious offense to commit. If we think that by chanting Hare Krishna, that gives us the right to do sinful activities, then it's a very bad offense. We must be very careful not to think that we can ever do such a thing. Then the eighth fans to consider chanting Hare Krishna, one of the auspicious ritualistic activities is karma kanda activity. And so people like karma kanda activities, they want to enjoy the material world, but this is not the real business in chanting Hare Krishna. And the ninth offense is to instruct the glories of the holy name to people who have no faith. So we can instruct everyone to chant Hare Krishna. But we will only instruct the intimate glories of the holy name to those who have already developed their faith in the holy name. We can tell everyone to chant Hare Krishna, but we don't tell them all the intimate pastimes of Lord Krishna. They have, they have to first of all awaken some faith. And so people can develop their faith by chanting Hare Krishna and by association with devotees who have faith. So it's very important to give people proper education in these things. And then the tenth offense is not to have complete faith in chanting Hare Krishna and to maintain material attachment even after receiving many instructions in the matter. So we are encouraged in chanting Hare Krishna you must not maintain your material attachment. You should be willing to let go of your material attachment. We have to understand the temporary nature of the material world. And we want to develop our Krishna consciousness. Our real business is to become surrendered to Krishna. And in order to do that, we have to let go of all of our material desires. So instead of desiring for our own sense gratification, we want to desire for the service of Krishna. And then we also add, at the, after reciting the ten offenses, we explain that it is also offensive to be inattentive while chanting. So everyone who is trying to chant Hare Krishna, they have to chant with attention. So we encourage them to chant clearly and chant audibly that you can hear, you move your tongue and you use your ears to hear, your tongue to chant. 
所以念诵 Hare Krishna 的人，我们想让他们呃非常专注的去念诵，在念诵的时候能够聆听到自己的念诵，去利用自己的耳朵和舌头在呃在这个念诵过程当中。If you do the chanting carefully, then you will feel the effect of the chanting. You will feel your heart becoming purified. 如果我们能够去专注的念诵，我们就能够体验到它给我们带来的影响，会觉得自己的心被净化。And your material desires will become insignificant. 我们物质层面的欲望就会变得微不足道。Insignificant. 呃，非常微不足道。Just forget all the material desires. 会让我们忘记所有物质的欲望。Just let go of the material energy. How do we let go of the material energy? We let go by holding on to Krishna. We hold on to the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna. We how to let go of the material energy? We let go by holding on to Krishna. We hold on to the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna. We let go by holding on to Krishna. We hold on to the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna. We let go by holding on to Krishna. We hold on to the lotus feet of So it's very important that in chanting Hare Krishna, that you also follow some principles. In chanting Hare Krishna, we have to follow some principles. In chanting Hare Krishna, we have to follow The pillar of a religion comes in the form of a bull, and the bull stands on four legs, which represent the four pillars of religion. These four principles are described: satyam, sotyam, dayatapa. Satyam means truthfulness. Satyam 的意思就是呃诚实。Truthfulness is destroyed by lying propaganda. 呃，诚实它会被呃撒谎所毁灭。In the Kali Yuga, it's very difficult for people to be truthful. They're very fond of telling lies at every moment. 在卡利年代，一个人做到真诚和诚信是很难的。他们通常非常喜欢说谎话。So we encourage devotees make a vow of truthfulness. Don't gamble with the human life. 所以我们想要奉献者能够对做到诚信这一点做出一个保证，呃，而是而不要去说谎话。It's very rare to get the human form of life. And it's even more rare to get the association of devotees. 得到一个人类的躯体是一个很稀有的一个机会，然而得到奉献的人者的联谊是一个更稀少的机会。In the association of devotees, one can cross over the ocean of birth and death. 呃，通过和奉献者的联谊，我们可以跨越生死苦海。So association with devotees is very special. We want to. Be very careful not to associate with the materialistic world in the form of uh, what do they call it, G5 or something. They have the cat and videos, mobile games. And everyone's watching telecast and uh, uh, Instagram and uh, so many different movies are there all the time. People are absorbing their minds in all of these things instead of absorbing the mind in Krishna. So we should really cherish and seek the association of devotees, and not be absorbed in material activities, such as playing cards, and watching some small movies. We should think about Krishna. Uh, the They told me in Malaysia, you know, it, it used to be people we watch. They watch television and saw the Tamil movies, but nowadays it's not. You know, that is only once a week Tamil movies. Uh, 以前马来西亚的一些人告诉我们，他们会在手机上看这个呃印度的 Tamil 是印度的一个语言，看这个语言的电影。但是现在他们一周看一次。
So nowadays it's not just once a week, but it's every moment, 24 hours a day, every day. Everybody has a mobile phone and they're watching all kinds of movies on their, on their mobile phone. And all of these things don't help to make us Krishna conscious. We become more and more colored and enamored and forgetful of our spiritual identity. So truthfulness, we want to be truthful to Lord Krishna and absorb our time in trying to remember Krishna. And if we, if we spend our time with so many things on the mobile phone and your internet, then you're gambling with the human life. You're gambling because if you leave the body suddenly, at the moment when you're absorbed in some movie, some thing on your mobile phone, we do not know what will be your destination in the next life. So after coming to Krishna consciousness, we want to take the full advantage of Krishna consciousness. And don't waste time, don't waste the valuable time, because that is how we become untruthful. The next principle is so jump, cleanliness. Cleanliness is not only externally, but also internally. Of course, just to get people to be clean externally sometimes is very difficult. Get people to bathe regularly, to wash their hands regularly. And cleanliness is a very, uh, probably would quote, but there's a saying that cleanliness is next to godliness. If we are not clean, then there's no question of Godliness. <laughs> so we give great importance to keeping things clean internally and externally. One of the ladies from the beginning of the Krishna consciousness movement described how she first met Prabhupada and Prabhupada first things Prabhupada asked her to do, he gave her one of the cooking pots and he said, can you clean this? So she took the pot and cleaned, she cleaned the pot, but when she gave it to Prabhupada, Prabhupada said, You've only cleaned the inside, you have to clean the outside of the pot also. And Prabhupada was not satisfied until she perfectly cleaned the pot, every mark on the pot, outside as well as inside. So you can judge the standard of cleanliness in a kitchen. You look at the pots and see 
how clean are they inside on the inside as well as the outside. 如果如果我们想去判断一个厨房的洁净标准，就可以看它用的这个锅碗瓢盆，呃，里里外外是不是呃一丝不染。So similarly as devotees, we also have to be very clean, keep everything neat and clean. 嗯、呃，我们作为奉献者，也应该保持井井有条，然后非常洁净的这样子的一个原则。Our temples have a good reputation for cleanliness. 啊，而我的我们的庙宇啊，也因为保持洁净而而著名。And devotees also were were very concerned with cleanliness. 我奉献者也很在意洁净这方面。It is said、uh, the brahmachari or the student they will take bath at least one time a day. 嗯，真守生他们一天至少要净身一次。Whereas those who are in household life, family life, they will bathe twice a day. 而那些居士，他们一天应该洁净身两次。And the sannyasis in the renounced life, they will bathe three times a day. 啊，三亚西，然后通过僧每天应该净身三次。So in this way, they keep about cleanly. 啊，他们会以这样子的方式保持洁净。And similarly, also cloth of the devotee. Every day, when we wear these dhoti, these robes, because it's very convenient to wash them every day. Ah,、uh, 同样对于奉献者的衣着来说，比如说我们每天穿 dhoti 啊这种衣服，一个是因为简单，另另外一个是他们清洗起来很方便。Here in this country, Malaysia, it's quite warm most of the year. So it's not difficult to wash things and then they dry quickly. Um, in Malaysia, this country is quite hot, so every day to wash clothes is not difficult. If you have to live in Europe or the USA, it's not so easy. Um, but if you live in Europe or the USA, it's not so easy. Um, but if you live in Europe or the USA, it's not so easy. Um, but if you live in Europe or the USA, it's not so easy. Um, but if you live in Europe or the USA, it's not so easy. We have to clean the mind every day by the chanting of the holy name. We have to clean the mind every day by the chanting of the holy name. We have to clean the mind every day by the chanting of the holy name. We have to clean the mind every day by the chanting of the holy name. We have to clean the mind every day by the chanting of the holy name. We have to clean the mind every day by the chanting of the holy name. We have to clean the mind every day by the chanting of the holy name. We have to clean the mind every day by the chanting of the holy name. We have to clean the mind every day by the chanting of the holy name. We have to clean the mind every day by the chanting of the holy name. We have to clean the mind every day by the chanting of the holy name. We have to clean the mind every day by the chanting of the holy name. We have to clean the mind every day by the chanting of the holy name. We have to clean the mind every day by the chanting of the holy name. We have to clean the mind every day To keep the mind and body, everything ready for the service of Lord Krishna. We should through our own efforts to keep our body, our mind, and body ready to serve the service of Lord Krishna. Then tapasya, austerity, and austerity, 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 austerity
abstaining from all kinds of intoxicating goods. Means no onion and no garlic. These things are rajasic. They're full of the mode of passion. We're already passionate people. And if you eat onion and garlic, you'll become more passionate. People may say, oh, it's vegetarian. It may be vegetarian, but it's not sattvic. It's not meant for people cultivating the mode of goodness. It is said garlic grew out from the dead cow. So it is not a substance which is acceptable for the worship of Lord Krishna. And similarly, we don't take tea or coffee because they have caffeine. People don't understand how they're addicted to these things until they try to give them up. Sometimes people, they can't get up in the morning until they first of all have their cup of tea. So devotee doesn't have attachments to these things. We don't have the white flute, the cigarettes. We don't smoke cigarettes. We don't need these white flutes. Devotees of Krishna are not dependent on these kind of substances. And certainly we don't take any alcohol substances either. And we know how much today, in the, how fond people are everywhere to drink alcohol. Spent today being a, a festive season, there will be more accidents on the road than any other time in the year because people are drunk. Intoxicated by some alcoholic substances. So devotees avoid all kinds of intoxication. And they also avoid false pride as well. They keep a humble mood. So satyam socham daya mercy is the final one we want to mention. Mercy, we want to be merciful to all living entities and especially we want to be merciful to the animals. We don't kill animals. There is enough food for us to eat without killing animals. We eat food which is uh, gifts of nature in the form of grains, fruits, and vegetables. So they are all available in the market. And that's the food for offering to Krishna. We offer to Krishna these things and we accept the prasadam of Lord Krishna. So we are giving initiation today to devotees. They are requested to recite these four principles. And we also ask them to make a vow to chant a minimum number of rounds. 
So Srila Prabhupada set the standard that the minimum standard was to chant in a day 16 rounds. Uh, Why 16 rounds? Well, that was just considered the minimum standard. Initially, Prabhupada wanted devotees to chant 64 rounds. 64 rounds means 100,000 holy names. But the world is found it not possible. So Srila Prabhupada gradually came to adjust things to 16 rounds. Which would take a minimum of a couple of hours time to chant. So other people, you will see my body is doing personal meditation, they will do two hours meditation. We do two hours japa meditation, two hours of chanting the holy name. And this is the most important of all the instructions of the spiritual teacher. We have to chant, make a program every day to chant the holy name, to associate with Lord Krishna in the form of his holy name. So 16 rounds is what is considered the minimum standard of devotion. But there are many devotees who make a vow to chant much more every day. <laughs> and of course we also ask devotees to observe the holy days like Ekadasi by not eating grains and beans on the Ekadasi day. So these are the principles that which are vowed in the presence of our sacred fire and in the presence of the deities and in the presence of Srila Prabhupada and all the assembly of the uh, our first question is why the initiation yagya is in the morning, but when devotees have a marriage, why the marriage yagya is in the evening? That's not a rule. Uh, the initiation could be in the evening, the yagya could be in the morning. There is no standards on that. We did begin the yagya here today. Uh, we, we began before the beginning of Rahu Kala. There's an inauspicious period in every day, a period called Rahu Kala. Rahu is an inauspicious planet which exerts an its influence at a particular time in the day. And so the Rahu Kala began, began this morning, 13 minutes after 10. So I came here before that time and we began the ceremony before that. Uh, 
还有一个你的体力、火气和恢复力是否能同时进行？技术场合为什么不一样？它的区别是什么？是这样。The second question of the Prabhu is can they hold an uh, initiation ceremony and the wedding ceremony at the same time? Wedding yagya and initiation yagya at the same time. Uh, why the study club is different for the two yagyas and what's the difference? Is that enough? Yes. Oh, it's the same thing. Wood and fire and heat. <laughs> Uh, Maharaj is saying that their ceremonies are the same. They have the same fire, the same wood, the same. Bahamji is more material thing. It's not to be done in the presence of the tree. The marriage ceremony is more material, so we don't usually do it in the temple room. We're making spiritual vows here today. Marriage is something else that takes place outside the temple. So they are from the Botanic Garden Center over in Penang. 
You have to understand that today some devotees are coming from different places. Not everyone is from this temple. So Prabhu and his good wife, they are based over in Penang. But they are taking the initiation over here today. So they have been practicing Krishna consciousness for many years now. They're coming to get, sometimes the husband comes first, sometimes the wife comes first. Sometimes the man never comes. <laughs> Often happens. Yeah, the, 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 the lady comes and the man doesn't come. So we will ask them to boost. And everyday chanting? Everyday chanting, they go sixteen Mother So Shamala Mataji we give you the name Surya Kanti Devi Dasi. Okay. And Kulan Prabhu, your name is Kula Shekar Das. Hello. Kula Shekar. Kulashikar Prabhu Ki Jai! Suryan, Suryan, Tanti Yehi Dasi Ki Jai! And the next one. Huo Jin Ji Han Zi Hong Xin Jiang Dian. Xia Yue Liang. How about you? So this Mataji is coming from KL. He drove from KL yesterday. And she is the sister of a very nice devotee there in KL. And her brother, her older brother is a preacher there in Klang. He's cultivated many people in Krishna consciousness. Her brother is actually a disciple of Srila Jayapataka Swami Maharaj. But her father is initiated by me. So she is taking initiation today. So what are the four principles? No giving, no intoxication, no illicit relationship, and no gambling. Okay. And then, uh, minimum 16 rounds of chanting per day. Okay. My works as a teacher in the government school. Primary education. 
Darinidara oh. means one who picks up the earth. Darini. The holder of the earth. Working here more in the temple, at the temple. Patron, at home. patron membership. Patron membership. In charge. He's in charge of patron membership. Patrons is the scheme which they have to support the temple and help to raise funds to support the temple. Uh, we have a congregation, we have a number of devotees who, you know, live in that a surrounding area and they can't come always regularly here to temple but Prabhu is in touch with them and they give contributions monthly and he will acknowledge their receipts and so it's an important service to maintain these uh, links with the congregation. So Prabhu is doing the full-time service in contact with people. So there's a lot of expenses to maintain this, this building. There's many things to be done. It takes a lot of maintenance and the deity worship. You can see the beautiful deity worship with all and so many expenses in the course of a month. And the Malaysian economy has, has not been very strong in the recent years. So Prabhu has a, this job, he's taking care of the patron members, encouraging them to contribute regularly, keep up regular contributions to maintain the temple. And he's been a devotee for several, several years. Somehow he just did not get to the ground to get the initiation. So Bala Prabhu, what are the four regulated principles? Yeah. Okay. Alright, so we give you the name Bhokta Das. Okay. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna is described as Bhokta. Bhokta means the enjoyer. Lord Krishna is the supreme enjoyer. So, Bhokta Das Prabhu, okay.
show in Karen. So this is another devotee from our neighboring center in Kulim, where we're going this evening. We're going to Kulim. There's another, there are two centers over there actually. So Shalini Manaji is from the Goku Center. The Goku Center is one center over in Kulim and it, it was set up, it was a house built by one of the devotees named Abhay Charan Prabhu. He's not here just now, he's in Mayapur, he's studying Bhakti Shastri. But this one devotee, Abhay Charan, he built a beautiful house and made it a temple, a whole house is a temple. And Shalini goes there to that temple. So, uh, she's also a, a teacher, just now she's teaching in the kindergarten, but very soon she's moving into the primary education. She's just finishing her uh, the requirements to enter into the government primary education teaching. So she's a young woman. Not yet married. But she's giving her life to Krishna. She's coming to Krishna consciousness. She's seriously committed. And she goes regularly to the Goku temple. And in, over in Kulim, the, the temple, there's another temple which is the Krishna Balaram temple. And she will also, she lives very near to that temple. So Kulim is an uh, uh, interesting place, many, many devotees over there. Many devotees live there. And Shalini is living over there. With her mother and her younger brother. Her mother is a devotee. So we all ask Shalini, what are the four regulated principles? No meat, no fish, no egg. Right? Even pure vegetarian. Right? Say no meat, <coughs> no fish, no egg. So let's have that. No onion, no garlic. Mm -hmm. People think vegetarian is also onion and garlic. Many Buddhists, they, they, they're, they're Buddhists. Are you vegetarian? Yeah, vegetarian. Egg. Oh, yeah, egg. It's vegetarian. Egg is vegetarian. They think onion, garlic, oh, no problem, man. I'm Buddhist. <laughs> Everything. Egg, onion, garlic. And then, yeah, I'm initiated in Buddhism. Buddhist master, what does he want? He just wants a, 
the, the red envelope. She would give them a red envelope. So, this is the Fosia, 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 the so you name it. Suvarna Bumi Devi Dasi. Suvarna Bumi means the golden land, the land where Lord Chaitanya appears. So you're the servant of the land of Lord Chaitanya. Suvarna Bumi Devi Dasi Ki. This this young this lady is also from the kindergarten teaching, teaching the children. And she is also from the Goku temple over in Kulin. And she takes care of her elderly mother and father who are both initiated devotees. So they go there to that Goku temple and serve there. So, you teach very Mataji, what are the four regular principles? Mm -hmm. right. Okay, and every day 16 rounds, right? Alright, so we give you the name Yuvati Rati Devi Dasi. Yuvati Rati. Rati. Rati Manjari, right? Rati. Yuvati Rati Devi Dasi Ki. So that concludes the uh, initiation. Yes. And this this is Navadvik Das. He's taking second initiation today. He's been he's completing the Bhakti Shastri. Which is which is required. What? What? Okay. Honorary degree. <laughs> okay. So, and he completed the Bhakti Shastri. And so that that's a requirement nowadays to get second initiation. And he is also very active in every weekend. So he is working during the week, for life. Monday to Friday. Good for life. But every weekend he's here, he's in charge of the Food for Life program. They distribute food for like 250 people every Sunday. And he is also giving service in the deity department. You can see our beautiful deities here. So he is helping there in the deity department. So there's always a lot of service required from the devotees here. So Namagri Prabhu is taking second initiation today and he will be more actively engaged in the deity worship department. Uh, 
If you were at the Galagor program last night, you saw his good wife. 如果昨昨天晚上参加了呃那边的活动，昨晚的活动，我们可能见到他们的妻子。And then his wife was there, and she was aspiring. Initiation. Ah, we 见到这个泰国的妻子，昨晚她是托庇，想的托庇马哈拉。But now the priest himself is already initiated, and he's now second initiation. He's very active in devotion, and because of his devotion, his wife is becoming also a devotee. Ah, 但是他爸父本身已经起立了，并且非常活跃的从事这个奉爱服务，因为他的这种奉爱，他的妻子也进入到奎什纳之所。Okay. So we ask all the devotees to please bless these people today. We have a number of our Chinese devotees also taking sitting in the yagya today. When we were in Taiwan, we gave initiation to a couple of devotees. We didn't get the fire sacrifice. There was no time. 在泰国的时候，我们已经给了他们这个名字，呃，但是我们没有机会做活祭。So they're taking the opportunity of the yagya today to sit in this ashram. 嗯，所以今天他们想也是借这个机会把活祭做了。So we should begin by chanting Brahma Samhita. 啊，我们应该一起先唱诵 Brahma Samhita. Create an auspicious atmosphere. Ishvara Parama Krishna Satchitananda Vigraha Anadir Radir Govinda Sarvakarana Karanam Chantamani Prakara Sakma Sukhaupa Priksha Laksha Vritesa Surabira Vipala Yantam Lakshmi Sahasya Satasam Brahma Sevya Manam Govinda Madhipursam Tamam Vajami Venanta Vanta Maravinda Dalaya Taksham Balhavatam Samasitam Buddha Sundarangam Kandar Pagoti Kamaniya Vishesha Shobham Govinda Madhipursham Thamaham Bajami Alola Chandra Kala Sattva Namauya Vamsi Ratnangadam Pranaya Keri Kala Vilasam Shyamam Sri Bangalari Daniya Taprakasham Govinda Madhipursham Thamaham Bajami Anganiyasya Shakalendriya Vriti Manti Vashyanti Panti Kalayanti Chayam Jaganti Ananda Chinmaya Sadujwala Vigrahasya Govinda Mari Pursham Thamam Bajami Advaita Chutta Manadi Ananta Rupam Adhyam Purana Purusham Lavano Vanam Cha Vede Shudur Lava Madur Lava Matma Vato Govinda Mari Purusham Hamaham Vajami Antastu Koti Sata Vatsara Sampragam Vyo Vayo Ratapi Manaso Muni Punga Vanam so piyasti yad prapada sinya vachintya tatve govinda mari pusham thamam vajami eko piyasora chaitam jagadanda koti kocha jirasti jagadanda jayara yanta andanta rasta paramanu jayanta rastam Govinda Mari Pursham Thamam Vajami Yadvava Pavita Vyo Manu Jasta Daiva Sambravya Rupa Mahimasana Yana Bhusha Sokhtarya Meva Nigama Prati Jaisu Vanti Govinda Mari Pursham Thamam Vajami Ananda Chinmaya Saprati Bhavi Javis Tatiriya Eva Nijarupa Kaya Kalabi 
राजा समस्त सुरमूर्ति अशेष तेजा यश नया पति समर्थ तव छत्रो गोविंद मालिपोषम हम बजामी धर्मो सपाप निचया सुतया सपसी ब्रह्मा लिखित पद गद पदयस्त जीवा यदा तमात्र विभवा प्रकट प्रभावा गोविंद मालिपोषम हम बजामी यस्विंद्र गोपमतविंद्र हो स्वकर्म बंधन रूप पर वचन मापनोति कर्मानि निर्दाति किंतु चपति वाचम गोविंद मारि पुरुषम धमाम बचामि यक्षो लकाम सहया प्रणयादि विति वस्त्र यमोह कुर कुर वसे यमावे संचिन चतश्च तद्विशिंतन मापुरेते गोविंद मारि पुरुषम धमाम बचामि श्रीया धंता धंता परम पुरुषा कपतरो त्रुमा भूमि स्थिता मनि गनमाइ तयम अमृतम कथा गानम नज्जम गननमति मम्मी प्रियसति जगहानम जोति परमापि तद्वस्त्रमापि च सायत्राशिरोदिश्वरती सुरविद्यस्तुमान नमेश्वर कलो लब्रजति नहि प्रचापि समया अजरे स्वेता दिमाहमिहा गोलोकमितियम विनंतस्ते संतासिति वेदलाकलाकति पाये ईश्वरा परमाकिष्णा सचिदानंदिका अनादि अनादि गोविंदा सर्वकारणाकारण Om Apavitra Apavitra Pavitra Va Pavitra Zarvavastu Gatopisma Yasmare Pundarikaksham Zapayantara Sikhi Shri Vishnu Shri Vishnu Shri Vishnu
ठीक हुआ था उसको लगने है श्री विष्णु श्री विष्णु श्री विष्णु नमस्ते हम
ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಟರ್ನ್ ಸರ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಟರ್ನ್ ಕೊಡಿ ಅಭಿನಂದಿ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅನೌನ್ಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಪ್ರಭು ಫಾರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಚಾಂಟಿಂಗ್ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಫಾರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಚಾಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ಸೊ ಆಲ್ ಪ್ರಭುಸ್ ಮಾತಾಜೀಸ್ ಯು ಹವ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಇನಿಷಿಯೇಷನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಯುವರ್ಟೀಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡೂ ಡೂ ದಿ ಸೆಕ್ಯೂ ಮಿಷನ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಟು ಯು ಕ್ಯಾಡಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಆಲ್ ದೋಸ್ ಯು ಹವ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಇನಿಷಿಯೇಷನ್ today and also our devotees all those devotees who have sit in the yagya now we are obligated to give our dakshina to guru maharaj so we all thank you very much yeah good la but in future you know just for your thanks and then go to all the members for like your donations and later give to guru maharaj ಅಡಿ ಗಾತ್ರ this is this is another important uh, announcement uh, also reading from bhagavad gita all those devotees who have taken initiation earlier and those who are sitting in the yagya and today the initiation also i read this uh, shloka vidhinam astranam mantrahinam adakshinam sada prahatinam yagyam tamasam parikshate The meaning of this, any sacrifice performed without regard for the directions of scripture, without distribution of prasadam spiritual food, without 